hear from the word of the Lord as it's written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, the work Apocalypse Explained, as well as the work Conjugal Love. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around, and see, they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons come from far, and the daughters to be nursed by your side. And then you, you shall see all together, and they shall flow together, and your heart, it shall be enlarged. Because of the abundance of the sea, it shall be covered for you, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come to you, and multitudes of camels shall cover you, dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, and from Sheba they shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall show forth praise to the Lord. The flocks of Keter shall be gathered together unto you, and the rams of Naboth, they shall minister to you. Who are these that fly like a cloud, and as the doves flying to return to their windows? Amen. In the Apocalypse Explained, it talks about those words, Who are these that fly like a cloud, and doves to return to their windows? This is said concerning the Lord. And it signifies all those who can receive and acknowledge him who are in simple truth and goodness and who can understand or perceive the word in even its natural ways. And that is, according to the way things are written in its letter, by them are meant the isles that are spoken of and the ships that come. This has reference to the natural man in respect to the things that they know about what is good and what is true. Who are they that fly as a cloud and as doves who come to their windows, these clouds stand for the things that we have from the letter of the word, and the doves, the goodness that is within all that we know. In Conjugal of 208, we're given a presentation of, of some married couples, some angels in heaven talking to one another, and they're revealing deep secrets that people hadn't heard about before. And they talk about a dove being seen. This dove was seen and it has spread its wings. Therefore, we anticipated that you would be returning, they're saying to Swedenborg, who has come to learn more. We have one more secret to share. Why do you say one, I asked them, when I've come to learn many? And as they said this, they heard the sound of the dove moaning. And at this point, they said, this is a signal that although we are eager to share more, yet we cannot. What would be the harm? Swedenborg asked them. The wives and husbands conferred together, and they said, you perhaps are going to tell people on earth. And they said, what harm could that, or Swedenborg said, what harm could that do? And the wives said, well, the wives on earth will just think that they're uh, the truth, but they'll tell their husbands their fiction. They won't believe you, but they will believe the lips of the wives that they kiss. And finally, in the work, True Christian Religion 144, in heaven it says, doves appear often. They're seen, and angels know when doves are seen that they correspond to the affections and the thoughts of the people who are standing there that they are having thoughts about regeneration and cleansing. And that if they should be approached and a different subject is brought up, the doves will fly away. Amen. Here end our lessons from the word. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Merry Christmas. We're here to celebrate the Lord's birth. Did you hear the Christmas story and anything that I read? I'll be wondering, no, I don't think I did. Well, we had the recitation. Talks about shepherds. You know, we know about the wise men, people 
hearing about the Lord's birth and coming to celebrate. And you're all here to celebrate. Did you get a call to come out from somewhere? Did somebody say, yeah, somebody got their hand up, got a call? An angel came to the shepherds and said, come. Tonight, the Lord has been born. Your Savior has been born. You shall find him wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And the wise men, they were called because they had been studying the ancient books of their religion, and it told them that when the Savior is going to be born, a star would appear. Now, how is it that you can see stars like that and angels? It takes a special gift. Something has to happen with you. It's not just everybody that sees these stars and angels. Do you know what that special gift is? It's a gift to you. It's having your spiritual eyes open. Wow. Has anybody here had their spiritual eyes open? You may wish to confess, or you might just say, you know, if I said yes, people might think I'm a little bit strange. People might think that. And yet, it's very, very true that people do see spiritual things and have visions from heaven. And they're very personal. They're very close to your heart. And you may not wish to share, or if you know about something like that from somebody else, you may just keep it as a tender truth that you have. So one of the wonderful things that we celebrate in our church is that Swedenborg had his spiritual eyes open and was able to see a lot of what the meaning of the Christmas story is about. And I want to go back to some of the things that are mentioned in the Christmas story. You see I have a representation, a little bit, little parts of a representation up here on the pulpit. Now which parts are missing and which parts don't belong? Does anybody have an idea that something's missing here? What do you see, Gray? Um, started. There's very good. Wow. We'll have to use all the lights as a star. Anything else missing could be there that's from the stories from the word, yes? The wise men, the wise men aren't here yet either, are they? And do we think that on the day that Jesus was born, the wise men were already there? I think they because they went to Jerusalem first and said, where is he who has been born? So he's already been born. They know he's been born. So the night that he was born, they're visiting in Jerusalem saying, hey, everybody, don't you know where your king has been born? Go to Jerusalem. The king didn't know. Nobody else knew. They had to search the scriptures and say, go to Bethlehem. So that moment that Jesus was born, that night or that day, the wise men weren't there yet. But that's really good. So we could have the star or the wise men. And are there any shepherds up here, do you think? You don't see a shepherd? Okay. Were you going to mention that? Yeah, I didn't bring a shepherd up. But what else do I have instead? Go ahead, Abby, what? The Lord Jesus and Mary and Joseph and the two sheep. Two sheep and a donkey. a donkey. Does anybody know how a donkey got into this story? The story of the donkey at the manger? Great. Do you think that there's a part of the story of a donkey at the manger? We often think about Mary riding on a donkey, right? But it doesn't say that anywhere. But it's okay that you can have that idea. It doesn't, it's not a horrible idea. It just it doesn't say that anywhere, that at the manger a donkey was also there. What about the sheep? Do they belong there? What do you think? Am I going to ruin the Christmas story by taking away those precious things? It's not bad that they're in a picture because why, why would they be there? Who would have brought some sheep? Abby, you already mentioned it. Who would have brought the sheep? Yes? Shepherds. The shepherds. So I don't have any shepherds there. I don't have any wise men there. And I'm going to put the sheep and I'm going to put them down because the, the, at the time the Lord was born, it said he was laid in a manger, which is the feeding trough for horses. And there might have been donkeys there, but it doesn't say that. It doesn't even say that there are horses there. There might have been camels, but they would have maybe come with the wise men, right? So we have Mary and Joseph and the baby. Can you tell what this is? What's that, Gray? A dove. 
It's just a representation of a dove. It's not a real dove. Real doves are really neat. They coo. Have any of you ever heard a real dove? It's kind of a gentle sound. Just like that, sort of. Okay? They coo. Now, it doesn't say a dove was at the manger or the scene either. And I want to bring it into a conversation about that because if we can have cattle and donkeys and sheep and other things, I want to talk to you about a dove. Where does it say that a dove appears in the stories of the Lord? A grown-up can answer, does anybody know a dove appearing in a story? John the Baptist. John baptizes Jesus, and it says a dove was seen descending upon and alighting upon the Lord. I think maybe landing, or maybe it looked like the Lord looked like a dove in some magical way. It doesn't really explain it. But there was a dove that appeared. And do you think everybody saw that dove? I don't think so. I think, again, it was something that people with their spiritual eyes, wanting, wanting to know more about the Lord, wanting to follow him, they saw they saw that dove. And I read a lesson that talked about doves showing up in heaven, and I think that's a wonderful thing to focus on. When you're thinking about celebrating the Lord's birth and you're thinking about these stories of the Lord coming to you, helping you change, do you know that your spirit in the other world is surrounded with doves? So I think especially on, on a night when we celebrate the Lord's birth coming to us, we, we have a new hope. Don't we want again to feel renewed? Don't we want again to celebrate the Lord's birth in our hearts and be happy and, 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 and share the joy with other people? Don't we want some little change to happen or maybe a big change? And we think now at this time of year, and especially at the first of the year, we go, oh, I want to make a big change in my life. Well, do you know that your spirits, if you intend that, are surrounded with doves? And if an angel saw you and they started approaching you and you could hear them speaking, and they talked to you about anything else, the doves would all fly away. That's what it says. And they celebrate the Lord's advent, and animals show up like the lambs that we've talked about, and the sheep, and the, the horses, and they, they are around in the spiritual world. And the lovely thing about celebrating in this church is we have the gift of the teachings of the second coming that tell us all the interior ideas of what we're truly celebrating. Truly loving the Lord, wanting the change that takes place in our life, and knowing that there's a heaven where the Lord is celebrated in fantastic ways. We're going to celebrate a pretty fantastic way. You've all got a candle. We're going to light a candle. We're going to pass out the flame and the light of the candle. And it's a way of celebrating. And the advent of the Lord in the heavens, we're told, is celebrated by fantastic light shows. Have any of you ever gone to a light show? Maybe at a concert or something, yeah? You know, when you get to heaven, you're going to have your, you're going to, well, let's say knock your socks off, but that's just not, well, people do that around Christmas time. They hang them, right? <laughs> Fantastic light shows in the other world celebrating the Lord's advent. And the lights go off here and there and in the east and the west, and they celebrate in the different quarters. They turn themselves to the different directions. And they thank the Lord for what they've been receiving to help them change their thinking, to help them change the way they're acting towards other people, help them change their intentions and what they're trying to get out of life. They celebrate by turning in different directions the way they could worship the Lord himself. They turn to the four quarters, and they're gathered, it says, from the east and the west, the north and the south. They celebrate with light everywhere. We're going to share a light. We're going to I have all, I think I'll ask Gray to come up in a minute and uh, light the first candle and then to go around and have people light in your aisles, just share the light and uh, have Gray, uh, what's your son's name, Dar? You want to help too in a minute? Okay. To share that light, the advent of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, the celebration of the birth of the Lord, what we're doing, of course, is we're celebrating the innocence and love the love the Lord has given us. We're celebrating the ability to change our lives. We're celebrating the ability to have doves around us spiritually. So may you have that peace, that love, that ability to change, and thank the Lord, especially now, that he has come into your life and can give you the ability to celebrate his life, worship him.
him and change to be a better person. Amen.